What's going on, everybody? Eric Lindquist at Stochastic here on the Odd Chopper channel, coming to you with another edition of Liddy's Leans, Likes, and Locks NBA. Hit that like button, subscribe button, notification bell goes a long way for me, and this video goes a long way for you. That way, you become a prize whenever great content is going live at our little neck of the YouTube woods, my friends. The NBA is rocking, MLB is just getting going, so check out MLB Lindy's here if you get the opportunity as well. But uh, excited to break it down. I took a lot of the weekend off again happy easter hopefully you enjoyed that on sunday here i'm recording on easter so there is definitely that um but yeah if you celebrate such things hope you had a great weekend great holiday but we're back to work here we got a lot to get to here for monday uh, i'm here in the great state of arizona lovely to be here gonna be firing up everything that i possibly can uh but bet mgm friends up to 1500 in bonus bets if you're in arizona or any other state that has bet mgm Arizona being one of them. You can sign up down below, friends. Get yourself access to up to $1,500 in bonus bets if your first wager loses. So that's basically, I don't want to ever use the word risk-free because everything has risk, everything. You know, it's whatever you're comfortable putting into play. That is what it is. Up to $1,500 is coming back to you if that first bet loses. So take some, some take some shots. Again, you, you can take a big plus money shot and increase your expected value by doing such. So sign up for that down below. Only for 21 and over. If you have a gambling problem, please call 1-800-GAMBLER. But we got six games. Pretty entertaining. And the last two, tons of playoff implications. We have two weeks left of the NBA season. We're going to be paying very close attention to the standings because some games, I think we're going to see the minutes change. We're going to see them ratchet it up. They're going to be numbers we want to get to early. That's why you're listening to this, of course. So producer Jacob, hi, hello. Let's get to the picks. Right off the bat, boy, do we have a, uh, well, you know by now. If Charlotte's the first game of the day, like producer Jacob says it is always, well, we probably have interest in targeting it to some extent. And I do have interest, obviously, in targeting Charlotte, but I just don't know how. We've got Jalen Brown questionable. We have Kristaps Porzingis, where they have him listed with right hamstring injury management, which just spells sitting him here. Now, Porzingis has kind of been a little engine that has made this monster this this absolute death star uh fully complete fully operational if you will uh i love everything that we've seen from Kristaps porzingis this season it's just a question of can we get him to playoff time healthy so you're gonna see some bubble wrap on a couple of these teams and well you don't want him completely sluggish entering uh the playoffs that's for sure but playoffs i'm not talking about playoffs but a 64 percent true shooting for Kristaps porzingis 72 percent shooting at the rim that's five feet and closer Phenomenal numbers across the board, plus 2.7 EPM, plus 1.1 defensive EPM. We're talking 3.8 altogether, 94th percentile basketball player. That sounds about damn right from the zinger from the unicorn himself, Christophs Porzegas. But anywho, how can I possibly back 17 here? I don't know if I can, knowing that Zinger is going to be off the floor. Al Horford enacted into some more duties. Xavier Tillman been a part of this rotation here now going forward. Luke Cornett's kind of fallen away. I think Luke Cornett will be somebody that actually gets inserted in here because, well, right now I have Kristaps Porzingis for 30 minutes, but I'm going to assume that that gets taken off. And Luke Cornett is somebody that I ended up putting in for 18 minutes to replace part of that. Al Horford ramping him up from like 26 to 32. Pokashevsky, the only guy that's questionable on the Charlotte side. Miles Bridge has been playing massive minutes regardless of situation. So that's actually a rotational NBA player, a very good NBA player that has been added to the fray. And Brandon Miller has gotten better and better and better as this season's progressed. I just don't think I can go out here and, and lay this on the road. Boston minus 17, it is still going to be the lean, but not a great first game to go out of your way to bet. We'll wait for the props to drop once that news breaks down, but I'm assuming Zinger sets. I'm assuming he does. Just don't think we'll be able to do anything about it. Oh my God. Memphis taking on Detroit, my friends. And my goodness, this is just late season NBA at its finest. You got Santi Aldama questionable with an illness. You got John Contar doubtful with heel soreness. And you got Desmond Bain, a oh, back soreness, just making up injury designations so he doesn't have to play against Detroit. And they just are going to be very cautious with him. Think about it, though. Next season, this is going to be a team that we might have a buy-low opportunity. Obviously, John Moran out for the season, Derrick Rose out for the season, Zaire Williams out for the season, Marcus Smart probably out for the season, Yuta Watanabe probably out for the season, Vince Williams probably out for the season. Brandon Clark just got back. I, I'm very happy to see Brandon Clark. Again, another actual NBA rotational player here. But the question is always going to be with these Detroit Pistons, does Cade play? Or does Cade not? Because there are going to be times that he plays, and there's going to be times when he's 
doesn't. And he is the most impactful player on this Detroit team by a lot, like by a, a lot, a lot. And I can't react to that here from the get-go. But knowing that he's questionable and seeing three here does have me leaning towards the Memphis side of things. I do think you're going to be able to react to a couple of these. And then if you're holding a Memphis plus three ticket, I don't think this line moves a ton to account for Cade in terms of like if Cade plays, Memphis becomes four-point dogs. But I think it becomes a pick em or better in the event that Cade sits. So I'm thinking about what I want to do here in this spot. Hopefully can react to something in the morning that would be your best course of action. The Brooklyn Nets taking on the Indiana Pacers here over 229. I am interested. Let's talk about why here. Brooklyn, they're playing the Lakers here right now. Absolute shootout there until the fourth quarter, 26-25. Now, it ended up finishing at 220. It went under that total here specifically. Again, we have a full sample size, and yet I'm citing one game. And I think this is kind of what's important to it. Brooklyn, Brooklyn is one of those teams that is starting to go a little bit deeper into the rotation with you know, Jalen Williams. I, or, sorry, Jalen Wilson. I don't know why they aren't playing him a little bit more. De'Ron Sharp starting to get a little limited. Dennis Smith Jr. only played four minutes. He only played four minutes. I don't know what's going on here, but DFS, Cal Bridges, Dick Claxton, Dennis Schroeder, Cam Thomas, I'm assuming everybody ends up playing here on this back-to-back. And this is a team that I think is going to start playing up in pace a little bit more with Schroeder and sharing the floor together it's something that's ever so slight because brooklyn not a team that generally plays up in pace 97.4 possessions per 48 minutes but it's increased over the course of the dennis schroeder tenure here and it's gotten a little bit better they went from bottom four to now they're what sixth the worst but eh, a little bit of improvement but you bring indy to town yep the lakers they're not nothing at 101 point, uh, possessions per 48 minutes but you get a full extra possession there 102.1 possessions per 48 minutes and you get a well they're not healthy because they're just there's guys who are out for the season now on the indie side but i think we have a known quantity is what i'm getting at halliburton Nemhard, aaron neesmith pascal siaka miles turner that is your starting five has been for a while shall be for the foreseeable future but TJ McConnell will keep the pace going in the event that this is a blowout. Obi Toppin, Doug McDermott knocking down shots of late here as well. But with Benedict Mather in on the shelf, they have a decent enough rotation there where Toppin and McDermott can fill in enough minutes. And Neesmith just playing 32, 34 a night going forward. I like the pace in this one. And you can get 229 right now over on DK. I think that's the spot to go fire this. 229 and a half everywhere else. I've got this as your first official play because, again, half unit on this one, even on the back-to-back. Feel pretty good about it. And maybe, but maybe we get one of those weird McCall Bridges first quarter and then sits out the rest of the game because he still has that consecutive start streak going. So very curious to see when props drop. This feels like now that we've gotten towards the end of the season, Brooklyn is completely out of it. 11th, 29 and 45. I guess they're not completely out of it. The Atlanta one's going to be fun, 34 and 40. They're still clawing, I guess, for a spot. But we'll see. Two weeks left in the season. Lots to be determined. Not lots to be determined here, friends. It's official. $14.95 weekly, $49.95 monthly. That's what it's been for a while, and it is awesome, friends, because you get the OS Premium Tools, you get the Discord, you get everything all in one place, all under one roof for a low, low price. And it gets a little bit better because you know, not only do you get my premium picks in the Discord, not only do you get the OS premium tools, such as the Positive EV tool that has props popping on the daily, that has the Fantasy Optimizer, that has the Parlay Builder, but you can get it all for 20% off using promo code LINDY. 20% off, friends, expert picks, Discord, premium tools, all in one place. Sign up at the link below, promo code LINDY. Get it for $12 for your first week, $42 for your first month. And again, good times will be had by all. Back to the picks we go. We got one like, let's get another one in the prop department. Portland taking on Orlando. We'll throw out that I thought about shorting DeAndre Ayton right when I saw 18 and a half. Because Orlando is a very good defensive team at this point. 111.0 adjusted defensive rating. That is second. Second in the entire NBA. Potentially the second best defensive team in the NBA. The Orlando Magic. Bet you didn't have that on your bingo card for 2023 slash 2024 NBA season. Nor did I. Nor did I. Now, they've had a pretty easy strength of schedule, if we're going to be be very, very honest. 30th, so come playoff time, we'll see if that's factored in whatsoever. Because they're good, but are they like 5th in the East? Good? 43 and 31 good? That's what their record is. You are what your record says you are. That's not true. 
Some people have very easy strength of schedules relative to adjusted strength of schedules. Some don't. And Orlando has one of the easier ones. It's pretty easy today, though. Orlando taking on Portland here in Portland, the walking wounded. DeAndre Ayton, he ended up coming back. He's off the injury report. Wouldn't be surprised if he just showed up from the middle of the, you know, freaking wherever. Made up land, wherever he is. Uh, DeAndre Ayton, I wouldn't be surprised if he ends up showing up on the injury report out of the middle of nowhere and sitting in a uh, spot like this. But Jeremy Grant doubtful. Malcolm Brogdon out, Shane Sharp out, Anthony Simons out, Matisse Thibel out. That's going to be somebody where I think uh, Bobaji ends up playing some minutes here. Doop Reef. Doop. Doobie doobie wop. Don't think him and Aiton are going to be sharing the floor anytime soon for any noticeable amount of time. I think it's just a true center split there. But Jabari Walker, Ryan Rupert, Chris Murray, Scott Henderson. This is not an NBA caliber basketball team. And yet, there's a guy on the other side, Wendell Carter Jr., he should be able to, I mean, Aiton's like the one good defensive, well, Scoot, Scoot Henderson can play defense. He just can't do literally anything else with the basketball at the moment. But I like Wendell Carter at this opening number, nine and a half. I know Portland brings no pace to the table, but they also bring no defense to the table. They are 23rd in adjusted defensive rating. They lose a Matisse Thibel who's out there purely for defensive purposes. And yeah, the... Nine and a half is too low for a guy playing 26, 28 minutes every single time out. Now, it could be one of those wonky spots where they utilize Mo Wagner more. Played only 24 minutes there against the Clippers. Played only 19 against Golden State in that loss as well. So I guess there is more of a minutes downside there. But when I put him in for 26 minutes, this was popping. And I don't see how with Aiton on the other side or Duop Reef, if he ends up being the guy that has to play center minutes here, I don't see how nine and a half isn't fantastic for a guy who when you put in his baseline rate of 25 and a half minutes per game is averaging north of 11. Give me this. We continue on. The Hawks taking on the Bulls here. We got three-point dogs, the Atlanta Hawks, and uh, really enjoying what they've started to do uh, offensively. I mean, it is DeJounte Murray and now Bogdan Bogdanovich in an eruption 38-pointer the other night. Uh, tons of usage, tons of assists. I mean, he is really starting to come on as a guy who we've seen glimpses of, of it in the past, but uh, that was wild. And they're just playing these guys like 40 minutes a night in every single spot now. They have no regard for humanity. It's starting to turn Quinn Snyder. Quinn Snyder drinking a little bit of that Tom Thibodeau juice. I mean, what are we doing here, bro? But I like it from a prop perspective. Now, you might be able to short some guys on specific spots, but in this spot specifically, this is a massive game for implications in terms of the playoffs. You've got the Chicago Bulls ninth at 35 and 39 in the East. You got the Atlanta Hawks at 10th. Where are they here? I know that they're 10th waiting. There they are, 34 and 40 themselves. So friends, this is going to be a competitive spot for two teams trying to claw into that play-in spot. Oh boy, oh boy, it should be played with tons of minutes. And the Bulls, we've seen Donovan do kind of the same thing here where you just see uh, tons of minutes going the likes of DeMar DeRozan. Tons of minutes going the likes of Ayu Desunmu. Tons of minutes going for Kobe White. And overall, friends, I see no way around it. 40 minutes a night for a lot of these guys? Why is the printer going? Why is the printer going? I'm going to keep talking. You know what? Stop it, printer. Anyway, DeJounte Murray, 30-plus points. DeMar DeRozan, 25-plus points. This has more to do with minutes. I like minutes and opportunity. Minutes and opportunity should be abound here, friends, in spades. Fire it up. Good times, just like you should fire up. BetMGM, oh my God. Friends, BetMGM, sign up for it down at the link below. Good times will be had by all because you get a first bet safety net up to $1,500 if your first bet loses. Yes, whether that's $100, whether that's $24.94, whether that is $184.47, whether it's $1,000 or $1,200, up to $1,500 coming back in your pocket in the form of bonus bets if your first bet loses. Great opportunity to take a big swing. Go get that money, honey. Only if you're 21 and over, if you have a gambling problem, please call 1-800-GAMBLER. Back. Final game. Oh, back to the picks. We got one game to go. Let's rock with it. I am a very, very interested spectator in this one, and not just because this has massive playoff implications. The Phoenix Suns taking on the New Orleans Pelicans here, but if you watched my videos coming right off of the All-Star break, I banged the drum for the under 48 and a half wins for the Phoenix Suns. Looks like a really, really good bet here. They still have the most difficult strength of schedule. They still have to face the New Orleans Pelicans twice here, coming down to the end of the season. They have a back-to-back -back against the Clippers. They have Minnesota on the schedule. It is going to be good times 
Was it frustrating that they found a way to beat Denver? Yes, it very much was. They they lost to the Spurs, though, so I, I guess you win some, you lose some, but we need them to keep losing them, but looks like it's a phenomenal bet, according to a lot of spots. Was looking at team rankings the other day, uh, teamrankings.com, that is, and they had it at like a 46 baseline, so it looks like it's pretty good, but you never say never. I mean, NC State is playing in the freaking Final Four, for God's sake. What? My dookies. Come on, my guys. But anywho, let's talk about happy things like the fact that that bet looks really good. The under 48 and a half wins for Phoenix. But they're going to be taking on the Pelicans here in this one. And the name of the game, friends, well, health. Big difference between the two here at the moment. Jose Alvarado, Brandon Ingram, both out in this one. Phoenix, Devin Booker, Bradley Beal, Grayson Allen, Kevin Durant, Yusuf Nurkic, everybody good to go. But I think there's just a little bit of a sneaky deal that we have here on the back of the bench. Because Dyson Daniels, Jordan Hawkins... We haven't seen them together here in quite some time, and, and they're just like back-of-the-bench type dudes. But overall, that helps a little bit in terms of adding a little bit of depth. Now, Jordan Hawkins is one of the worst defenders in the entire NBA, but he can knock down open threes. Well, at least he did once upon a time in college, but 36.4% three-point percentage. Uh, going to be fascinating, fascinating stuff here, friends, to see these back-end New Orleans guys added a little bit more into the mix. But for me, this comes down to a New Orleans team that has C.J. McCollum playing more C.J. McCollum-esque. Now, he's also just going to be one of the negative defenders. You have Herb Jones doing unbelievable things. Trey Murphy doing decent things. Again, he's just out there for his shooting for the most part, too. But a pretty decent defender. But C.J. McCollum playing some awesome basketball. Now up to a plus 2.5 estimated plus minus. 92nd percentile basketball player over on Dunks and Threes. And overall, feel pretty decent about backing these New Orleans Pelicans in a spot against Phoenix like this. It's already a pretty flat neutral line, kind of a pick'em spot. And if you had to go through a draft and take the top five players in a row and just say, all right, who, who, I, how would we order them? I think the first two come from Phoenix and then it becomes Zion. And then it, this is truly the sum of the whole is better than the sum of the parts. And in the NBA, yeah, you can ramp up Devin Booker to 36, 38 minutes. Bradley, 36 38 minutes grace Allen, one of the most underrated seasons you could ever freaking imagine here and yet the new orleans side is where i want to be kind of uh setting my uh, attaching my sail if you will is that something you do do you attach sails i don't think you do this might be the worst explanation of like a math-based market-based approach pick ever this is already up to one and a half most places but i just took the money line here again you can get minus 110 even at those one and a half places so just do that instead of getting minus 105 or even money at espn bet that i'm looking at here for the minus one one and a half so new orleans pelicans money line here really like defensively what they're bringing to the table i do not trust this suns team they continue to underperform, under deliver and the pelicans plus 5.2 adjusted net rating that is the fourth best. I have them as the fourth best team. Now, they need to get Brandon Ingram back. That is very, very important. But fourth best in adjusted net rating, 45 and 29. That is no mistake, friends. Phoenix is down there at 10th. New Orleans is at home. Fire them up here for the money line. Your luck. And that does it for another edition of Lindy's Leans, Likes, and Locks. You know what to do. Go to that comment section below. Let me know your favorite plays that exist on the board for this beautiful, lovely little six gamer we have here in the NBA streets. Don't forget to check out the 14 games that broke down in the MLB streets. Lots of starting pitchers to go through over in that one. Lots of bets to get through as well. Going to be firing up everything in that premium Discord, so you can sign up for that down below. Sign up for Odd Shopper. Use promo code Lindy when you do 20% off. And of course, thank you to BetMGM. Thank you, producer Jacob. Let's get ourselves the heck up out of here. Hopefully you had that great Easter holiday. I'm going to go get myself a little dinner. It's going to be a nice time with the family. Going to enjoy that. I'll be back at the home base tomorrow. Until next time, friends, I'm Eric Lindquist. Best of luck in the NBA streets on Monday.